How to find a life partner? Proverbs 18, 22. It says, he will, Proverbs 18, let's read aloud. He who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. Hallelujah. He who finds a wife, say with me a good thing. Shout it a good thing. A wife is a good thing, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Finds a good thing and obtains favor. It's a combination of both. You find a good thing and then you come and then you, and then you also receive favor from the Lord. Say with me, favor. Shout it, favor from God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Number one. The five major way to find a life partner. Number one, is he or she under authority or is a freelancer? If, particularly you sisters, if a brother has no one in his life that can correct him or help him flee for your life, the reason is because when things are tough, who do you tend to? If you can listen to nobody, you are finished. Remember, he will be your authority. If he does not know authority, he cannot be the right authority. He will abuse his authority over you. Don't say, I have goosebumps, pimples, God, the Lord is dying. No, 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 no. Go and take a good bath. Adjust yourself. Get the goosebumps out. Uh, these things are serious. Amen? <laughs> if the person is not under authority, run. Amen. Is there somebody the person respects who can tell him, stop this, and he stops? If not, let me tell you, flee for your life. It's a matter of time you go through hell. Because no one can truly exercise authority who does not know authority. That's, that's the first. Always check who can he or she listen to. Is she the type where she's, she's the Lord to herself? She believes that what she says is heaven and never changes. She just stays there and she believes it and she listens to nobody. That woman run away. But it's more of a man's problem than a woman's problem. Amen? Amen? Amen. Sisters, is that true? <laughs> so if you are a man here, ask, 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 ask yourself or ask the brother around you. You turn to the brother there. All of you, the, the men behind, they talk to yourself. Ask yourself, who is your authority? Who can you listen to? So ask the question to you. To, 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 <laughs> the two of them are asking one person. <laughs> Because if you cannot listen, you are not ripe for marriage. Amen? 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 Because authority thing is a matter of God. God is the highest authority. If you, if you are submitted to, the, to God's authority, you will not mind submitting to human authority. Therefore, if you are submitted to God's authority, you will not mind Submitting to human authority. Who can correct you if you are going wrong? If you are going wrong, if you are dying, who can help you? Or who has corrected you before and you listen? Amen. Number two. Who are the parents? Did he or she, where did he or she grow up? It matters. It may not matter at the initial sight when you look at her or him. But it will matter with time. Amen? So that you understand the package you are getting. Amen. 
Who is he? Where did he or she grow up? Who are the parents? Was the father beating the mother every day? He learned how to beat women. Are you getting it? What is, where did, how did he grow up? I'm not saying that there is not grace of transforming a life that was spoiled. That there's always abundant grace. Amen. But if, if in case that you need grace in your case, you better know that you need grace before you enter into it. Make your research well. Don't just jump and enter into a, into a relationship with somebody you have no idea about. Amen. Check the family out. Tell your neighbor, check the family out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three. Is there something about the person you don't like? Nothing will change. Can I be brutally honest with you? Tell your neighbor, I love the truth. Okay, you have confessed it. Amen? If you don't like a certain thing, don't think it will change in marriage. It gets worse. Sisters, if that brother smells... <laughs> Some sisters say, I washed him. <laughs> I'll clean him. <laughs> if the brother doesn't take care of his body and he smells. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are some of us who can't stand bad others. I can't. I can't. Are you getting it? So, what do you do? Don't think marriage will change it. Especially if the person is dirty. Don't say, I'll pray over it. For grace to bear the scent. <laughs> so, avoid certain things that matters to you. Yes, yes. Amen? I'm saying it for broad because generally it's men. Generally, there are women also who need help. That's the truth. But I'm just talking about generally it is men. So, if you have an issue with bad odors, run away before you start crying all your marriage life. A sister told me personally, say for seven years I've been married to a smelling man. He said, I wish I could, I, I wish I could get out. I said, did you know, did you know before you got married to to him, you know what she told me? She said, I knew, I thought I would change it. <laughs> I was a lie. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is so crucial because generally people are deceived. They expect a change. The person just become a new person when he says, I do. No. The real person comes out. The real person comes out. Basic issues. Say with me, basic issues. Amen? If there is a character you don't like, don't think it will change. Especially serious character. Is he in debt? How does he handle money? Is he a stingy man? He will be stingy with you. Tell your neighbor, he will be stingy with you. But that's not your portion in Jesus' name. <laughs> how, how does he treat? Is he stingy? Has he ever given you a gift? A man who loves gives gifts. Amen? If it is difficult for one cent to fall, it will not fall in marriage. 
Amen? So those are type of character that if you don't like, please make sure, you st because in marriage it will be your, what I call your, your cross. Amen? What is the person's character? Let me tell you. If a man or a woman treats you bad before marriage, it will get worse in marriage. What is his attitude towards you? When he is cutting you, does he get this rage of anger? It's a message to you. Run. Say with me, run. 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 <laughs> I like that for your life. <laughs> you said it correctly. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, number four. Are you compatible? Say with me, compatible. Say, compatible. Say, are you, are you compatible? Amen? The first one is spiritually. Is the person, as, as my wife was telling you, if you are not in love with Jesus, you cannot be in love with me. Amen? Are you compatible spiritually? Is the person in love with the Lord? You cannot get married to an unbeliever. You cannot say, I will change him later. Mm -hmm. You got it. Don't say, I will change him later. The man can come to church. I've seen cases of men who went to church just to get a girl. After that, they ran. Amen? So are you spiritually compatible? If you are not spiritually compatible, forget it. Amen? Now, the second compatibility is physical. Say with me, physical. If you believe the person is not handsome, stay away. If you believe the person is not, the girl is not beautiful to you, stay away. Leave somebody's daughter alone. Amen? Because, believe me, if you believe the person is not beautiful, after one or two children. If you believe that the person is not beautiful, after one or two children, it will be worse. Except the person works with God and does something with herself. So, if you don't believe the person is physically attractive, Leave the person alone. Amen? Because let me tell you something. Do you want the truth? You will live your life looking for the person you wanted. It's frightful. My wife can tell you we have cancer couples. Some married for many years. Still dreaming. They are not really in love. They are dreaming for that person they really wanted. So, if you don't admire somebody, remember something that which I want to say to you. Admiration can come with time based on the person's character and everything. Okay? You get what I'm saying? But if there's nothing there to admire, there will not be something there to admire. Amen? Then, the next compatibility is what I call academic or intellectual compatibility. You have a PhD and you are marrying somebody who doesn't even have high school. No, not high school even. Uh, no, no. Uh, um, Elementary. And no, 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 I'm not finished. I'm coming. In, because let's say this person did not get there because maybe the parent did not have money to put the child to school. He's naturally intelligent and he's building himself. He's reading. He's studying hard. It's okay because he's building his brain. But you get married to somebody who, who, who is not learned and does not want to change, and you are a graduate student. 
with a PhD or with a master's, I'm telling you, you people think differently. Your attitude to life is different. You will be shocked. These are things that people don't like to talk in church. But I'm sorry I'm talking about it. Because I've dealt with a lot, enough counseling to know that I cannot ignore it. Sometimes you are talking with two people. You just realize that these two people have different brains. One is well studied. The other one is still a baby. So what I'm saying is that these are things you must consider. If you get married to somebody who is not educated, listen. It's okay, provided that person has an overriding thing that makes him peculiar. Take the case of the, 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 the great man of God called um, Simid Woolgosword. Simid Woolgosword, the wife was a master's, had master's. Simid Woolgosword, I think the highest level was elementary. You know what happened? Because Simid Woolgosword was so so soaked in god a great man of god the wife could respect him and there was that that thing that you will not even notice that the wife is very educated because the man carried something that pulls respect but when a man is not anywhere and he does nothing to build himself you will have hell on earth because for many young women, after a certain age, they just want any man. Let me tell you something. You are better single than any man. You will discover when you get there that you are single time were the best time. If you get married to the wrong man. Amen? Because we sometimes ignore these things and just make everything spiritual. That's why a lot of people suffer. Is there social compatibility? Is the person a social misfit? <laughs> what I mean is, there are people who are so insecure. You get married to an insecure man, you are in hell. Or an insecure woman so insecure you pick up the phone like this who are you talking to who, who is that let me tell you marriage is trust you are so insecure that everything around you a sister greets your husband i don't like that sister the way that sister greeted you let me, let me say this. Insecurity can destroy your marriage. If you notice during engagement that your partner is extremely insecure, you either deal with it during the counseling time or run. Amen? Because an insecure woman can give you hell on earth. Or an insecure man will give you hell on earth. One of the best gifts I have with my beautiful wife is the fact that my wife trusts me. And because she trusts me, I can never break that trust. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I'm in, uh, whether I'm alone or whether I'm where, I know I have a beautiful wife that believes me. She never questions me. Say, hey, hey. So because of that, I just must give her the best. Let me tell you something, people of God. If you want a successful marriage and you have insecurities, you must deal with. And it's horrible when a brother is insecure. It's horrible when Amen? But I also want to plead that give the person the reason not to doubt you. Give the person the reason not to doubt you. Say with me, Father bless me with a secure partner. 
in Jesus name. Amen. Finally, number five. What are the weaknesses saying? Say with me the weaknesses. The first weakness is father and mother. The day you bring that brother to show your father and mother, especially if your father and mother are believers, what do they think? What do they think? That's the first weakness. Say with me the first weakness. Amen? The second weakness is your pastor or spiritual leader. What do they feel about it? Because when God has given you, put some people ahead of you, they are there to help protect you. And God gives them the grace to help protect you. So when they have a say, listen, don't say, I'm in love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I remember a sister came to us with, with somebody. My whole being was revolted. Just seeing the brother. First of all, the first thing I noticed was the incompatibility. Yes, there was no, they were not compatible at all. First of all, a very pretty sister. That brother, hmm. I'm sorry. It's the time that you know when your daughter to come near. Because I asked myself, as a servant of God, will I want my own daughter? You, you get what I'm saying? To marry this. Because when you look at him, you start looking at their grandchildren. So who grandchildren with this type of head? <laughs> so I'm saying, listen carefully. To that brother... Another person will come that likes him. Are you getting what I'm saying? What I'm saying is that you don't have to get married to somebody because you're sorry for the person. Leave the person to God alone. Amen? You get married to somebody because you want it. Not because you are sorry. I just feel sorry that no one will marry this one. So I decided to marry her. Tell your neighbor, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Say in Jesus' name, don't be sorry. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Your, your spiritual parents, O oh leaders, the mind of the unbiased saints, say with me the unbiased saints. What are they saying? What do they think? What do they feel? The people who love the Lord and who love you. What do they think? Check. Well, how do they feel about it? Amen? Those are the weaknesses around you. But the first number one weakness is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that gives you rest in the midst of even something in the flesh telling you no. You know that you have rest even when your flesh is telling you no. In such moment, you know God is speaking. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell the neighbor, this is, great. this is great. Amen. So I rush over this. The other things we can't share tonight because of time. But if you will listen carefully to the Lord and be very careful with what the spiritual leaders ahead of you are saying, and your parents and your mother, if they are not biased against Christians, you get what I'm saying? Like there are cases where an unbelieving parent will be against a believer. But that's a different case. I'm just talking about generally, if your parents are not, they are Christians and they are not biased, most often pray that God will use them, God will use your spiritual leaders to speak. Because, let me tell you something, after salvation, the most important decision of your life is who you marry. The person you marry who can make you or break you. It's a matter of life together. And you get married to the wrong person, you have your own hell on earth. Amen? I repeat, you have a billion times better single than to marry the wrong person. 
You get married to the wrong person, you're finished. And if you don't truly want something, don't get involved in it. Save yourself and that person a lifestyle of regret. Amen? If you don't want something, don't get involved in it. Hallelujah. Amen? Finally, you know, God, the Lord always overrules certain things. True either prophetic declaration like when we came some of us were in tanzania the lord will bring two people together miraculously amen you know the case of our precious georgia for some of you already know. Yeah. hallelujah yeah. it means the lord overrides some of the things we are talking we are talking about the normal circumstance and the, secondly, the miraculous circumstance. The normal circumstance, we have shared how it goes. Miraculous circumstance, you don't question God. But you still have to make it work. Because those two people have to, have to still die to their self. Marriage is dying to yourself from beginning to the end. When you are ready to go to heaven, you will be dying going. <laughs> That's the truth. Because two people coming together, we don't know themselves. Don't think that because God spoke, it will just be heaven, heaven, heaven. No, 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 no. There will be times which will be rough. But you must learn to die to yourself. Amen? Amen. Say with me, learn to die to yourself. Learn to die to yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. So my beloved wife, the most beautiful woman in the world, please, it's time for you to answer the questions.